Hello, this lecture covers the introductory part of Chapter 1, Ergonomics Design Philosophy. We're going to be taking a look at a review of the definition of ergonomics, benefits, comparison to human factors, how Eastman Kodak applies it, or has applied it, comp strategies that your company might be using, and then we're going to be moving on a second lecture recorded separately focuses on using or applying data you might have used in the past. We'll be looking at anthropometry, posture, and grip strength data. And so starting out, if I were to ask you if this were a quiz question, what's the definition of ergonomics? Pick one, one, two, or three. You'd probably respond by saying that, hey, this is a trick question. I think they're all good. And, and I would respond, you're absolutely correct. Number one looks at the translation from the Greek of ergon is work, nomos, laws of. You put them together, you get laws of work. Also translated as uh, principles of work or rules of work. And so one is correct. Two, I've used, and maybe you've used, a textbook that was titled that, Fit the Task of the Human, and so that one's correct. We definitely won't, don't want to fit the human to the task, otherwise they'd be bending, contorting, reaching, and so on, um, things that we know would be ergonomically bad for, for the human to do. And so two is correct, as it's written. And then three, some people uh, like the, uh, the extended definition. They want to work in the human capabilities and limitations. And so if we design systems, we design workspaces, design equipment with respect to human capabilities and limitations, that's definitely ergonomics. And so all three are good. If I were to ask you next slide, what are the benefits of ergonomics? So if you were going to implement an ergonomics uh, um, process within your within your company what would your company get out of it so what are the benefits you would probably take a look at if you had to pick one through seven you would probably say number seven all of these um, and of course I should say that the upward arrow means an increase and so I'm doing a little bit of shorthand and so benefits of applying ergonomics would be increased production if people can do jobs more easily, then they can do them faster, longer, so increased production. If um, they can do them more easily, they should be safer and healthier. The product should be produced of a better quality. If they're not feeling pain and discomfort, um, they're not having injuries, there should be an improved morale. And so really the answer is number seven. All those are, are, are increasing benefits. But if I ask the opposite, could you give me benefits as a response of decreasing uh, quantities? Could anything decrease and you would see that as a benefit? And you'd probably just take the previous slide and say, well, if I see increased health, then it's likely I'll see decreased injuries and illnesses. If it's before it gets to the injury and illness stage, simply in, de in decreased discomfort, that would be a benefit. If they're feeling decreased discomfort, if they're not having to recover from muscle discomfort and pain, you might see a decrease in absenteeism. If they're not suffering from injuries and illnesses, you should see a decrease in workers' comp. And if we look at some production effects, you would see a, hopefully, see a decrease in defects, so defective parks, or decrease in a need for rework, and so, and so that would also be a benefit um, coming from a decrease in a factor. Okay, so that takes care of definition, benefits, moving on, human factors and ergonomics. Are these, are these the same fields? Are they different fields? Are they, meaning, are the terms equivalent? Am I talking the same thing, or are they different? And the response to this is, well, it depends on where you are employed. It depends on where you've studied. It's like the question of, do you call it, do you drink pop, or do you drink soda? Similarly, do you call it human factors? Do you call it ergonomics? For this course, for the purposes of, of my course, I really don't care what you choose to call it. I consider them I consider them equivalent. 
Um, and so if you had a human factors course, you are prepared for this course. If you've had an ergonomics course previously, you're prepared for this course. You're looking at the same human capabilities and limitations. And so from my perspective, it's the same. The Kodak book will note a slight difference as in they have a human factors group that focuses on, that, that used to focus on, on design and consumer products. Um, essentially, after World War II, when um, human factors specialists were employed by the military to design equipment, design, um, design uniform sizes based on human body size, design cockpits, design placements of controls, design uh, the weight or load that that soldiers can carry, they took these the same sort of information. The um, human factor specialists went out to the workplaces and they were interested in primarily designing consumer products. If we design consumer products that are that are good for people to use, that are easy, that are comfortable, that are intuitive, then we can sell more products and make our companies more money. And so the human factor side focused a lot on, on um, human machine interfaces, trying to reduce errors as people interacted with machinery. So Codex started, first started applying human factors in that in that manner. Well, eventually, 10, 15, 20 years later, they realized that their workers were becoming injured and that they could apply some of the same basic concepts that they use for design of equipment to look at their work, their their employees' interaction with the workplace. And so they started another group, an ergonomics group, that looked at how work affects people in the interest of reducing fatigue, reducing stress, and thereby reducing injuries. And so they called this group the, the ergonomics group. And so Kodak has a slight differentiation. Your, your companies might be calling it ergonomics because, well, Kodak used some of the same concepts that Europe was applying in the, in the 1960s. Europe was calling it ergonomics, and so industry in the United States started calling this applied applied part um, in workplaces. They started referring to that as ergonomics. Um, your company, they might be calling it either. either. I've seen a resurgence in the past couple years of, of looking at human factors um, applied to the workplaces and, and some people are treating this as a, as a new concept. Um, because uh, American workplaces have been calling it ergonomics, and so it, it's it's been published as it's kind of new concepts, new strategies, um, but 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 either one is acceptable. Um, so your company might call it either one, but I also want to look at as you'll be working on some of your practical applications for this course week by week. Um, you might be interested in where your company stands, what sort of strategy they're they're employing. Um, on their ergonomics approach, and so this just looks. This slide, the bottom of the slide, just lists three different different ways to describe their approach, and really they're talking about the same thing: um, concept of a, having a program, an ergonomics program versus an ergonomic process, um, applying microergonomics versus macroergonomics, or being reactive versus having a strategic plan for for ergonomics. Um, Really, the first, the left-hand side of all three of these bullets, you're at the beginner, more of the beginner stages. If you have, if you've, a workplace has had an injury, a back injury, or a couple back injuries, they don't have anything in place ergonomically, they're probably going to develop something fairly quickly so that, so that more injuries don't occur because you seem to have a rash of rash of injuries when, when one, one occurs. Um, this, uh, this, the, if, if they don't have a big plan in place, big str strategy in place, they might be at their reactive stage. They're going to react to that in in injury by developing an ergonomics program. This will be a back injury prevention program. And so we're going to start small. They might be employing microergonomics to look at the workstation, the work task to find out that they had this back injury because they were lifting too low, bending over too far, reaching too far, was the load too heavy. And so they're looking at the individual job from a microergonomics perspective. As a company has more experience with ergonomics, they'll move, they'll, they'll move towards the right-hand part of these bullets. 
um, in which they develop a process and so you looked at OSHA's recommended ergonomics process and saw that it was it was seven elements large and so you were looking at what sort of process your facility might have um, in that in that way rather than just having a simple program you've moved into having participation at all levels from the CE, CEO do, on down to the floor and so you've got a process in that way you'd be employing macro ergonomics or you might say you have a strategic uh, you're, you're employing strategic ergonomics and these are really looking at saying that that you're um, looking at the organizational design so you're considering all the all the things that might affect your work your workers looking at communication looking at shift work looking at personnel um, selection and development looking at environmental factors and and um, you're you're ensuring that all these things that have effect on the workers on the on the job signs are are evaluated and are are planned accordingly uh, smaller early stages of this you're focusing on your current or existing jobs but as you move and and keep developing further you look at a strategic plan you look at employing ergonomics before the company um, builds a facility before it even plans to build a facility before it puts jobs put lines in okay so if you can do all that, that beforehand um, you'll be on the the far right hand part of the screen so wrapping up this introductory lecture, just wanted to mention Kodak's strategy in providing this book is to give you practical guidelines that they've developed for their own facility so that you can implement the same things at your facility. They want to provide these guidelines that transfer to the plant so that you can design um, both existing jobs, so improve your existing jobs to make sure that, in, that workers are not injured, and then also take a look at new jobs and again moving into that bigger picture for the future. And so this concludes the introductory part of this lecture. You'll now want to move on to the second part.